Welcome everyone to our RAN 3D Productivity Now webcast. On the agenda today is an overview of the Productivity Now portal, followed by a demonstration, and then we'll discuss benefits and return on investment. And lastly, we'll take your questions. I'm pleased to introduce our two speakers today, Paul Burden, our Director of eLearning Solutions and Digital Content, and Todd Stewart, our Manager of Productivity Now Solutions. Paul, I'll now hand things over to you. Great, thank you, Corrine, and good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure to be with you and to, to give you an overview and a, a demonstration of our Productivity Now platform. I'm just going to go through a couple of quick slides here just to kind of introduce the platform and then I'll turn it over to Todd who's going to take you in to the site and a tour around some of the content and features that we have uh, in Productivity Now. So Productivity Now for those that are new to us as a platform that we've offered for a number of years. Uh, we started offering what we call web-based training or WBT back in around 2001 and we've certainly seen the the purpose of a, of a platform like this evolve over that time over the 20 years or so when we first started doing this it was really to fill in the individual gaps so we'd have quick little e-learning tutorials on sketching in creole or pro engineers it was at the time or, or you know doing design tables in katia something very specific and and where it's evolved to now is as a much more comprehensive type of learning tool for users of these tools. So you'll see we offer content for, certainly for Creo Parametric and Simulate, Katia. Also on the Autodesk side, we have a full library of content for, for their core products. And what this platform really has evolved to for us is, is a just-in-time learning tool that enables users to access not just the content that we put into the system, but you'll see also being able to, to access content that you're publishing into the system as well. So it really becomes an all-in-one tool for, for different learning resources. The idea of accelerating learning is a, is a key one for us here. So what we're seeing is we're seeing more companies starting their new users off in this, in this type of platform. We're seeing it become more of a primary learning tool. We still certainly put a lot of emphasis on instructor-led training. We, on the RAN 3D side, we still have quite a, a list of courses that we offer for products like Creo Parametric and for, for Katia. We offer those classes in both in-class, in-person, formats as well as in a virtual training format, so synchronous type of learning online. And, and what we started to do now is, is tap into that instructor uh, resource pool for self-paced learning as well. So what you'll see in the content that we're going to show you is, you know, we've got instructors that have 10 and 20 years experience with products like Creo and Katia, and we started having them capture some of their insight in videos that we we've incorporated into the into the training courseware so it's no longer just you know here's some content go off and learn it on your own we're really trying to bring in the, the insight and the knowledge of the instructors that you would normally have with you in an instructor-led setting now into the self-paced version of our content as well so that's been a big way in which we've improved the learning over the last number of years in this platform another area that we're seeing a lot of use for for products like this is with update training so obviously users of Creo, we're seeing now starting to transition to version 7 of Creo Parametric and Creo Simulate. So a lot of users, certain companies are looking for options for doing update training on that. Similarly, you know, on the, in the Katia world with the transition to the 3D Experience platform, companies looking for you know that transition course that would take them from Katia V5 up to the uh, 3D Experience platform. One of the big areas that we've seen this system evolve for us is offering our customers and our companies that are using this product the ability to host their own content and publish their own content into the system. So certainly we'll have a vast library of content for all of these products available in the system for your users. But oftentimes there's specific processes and workflows and just ways of doing things that are unique to your company that we now give you a way that you can, if you have some of this stuff documented, whether it's in, you know, Word format or HTML or even video content, we give you a way now that you can publish this content 
into the system, make it available to your users right alongside of the content we provide. And we'll even give you ways that you can manipulate our content to incorporate or to combine it with yours. So we can create learning paths and courses in here that include both the, the content that Rant 3D provides as well as content that, that you have for your for your organization, whether that's best practices and workflows, procedures type of thing can all be incorporated in here. The main area for us, uh, the main purpose for us is certainly to provide increased productivity for your users. So again, you know, using the ways that I mentioned, access to a full library of content, access to content that you put into the system. These are all things that enable your users to stay productive so they know that they have this resource that they can go to at any, any moment. Another big factor for us on this is that it also gives your users control to some degree over their, uh, their learning and their progress through uh, learning these tools like Atia and, and Creo. So, you know, no longer do they have to wait for a surface design course to be offered by, by their reseller, for example. They know they can come in to Productivity Now and have access to the full library of courses that we have, which would include you know, surface design and, and certainly all of the core areas for T and Creo, whichever one you happen to be subscribing to in here, and, and take that course, you know, just as I mentioned earlier, just in time as they need it, when they need it. So again, that enables users to progress themselves, you know, their knowledge of the products, and also uh, still fill in those gaps. I mentioned back in 2001, that was our primary focus, and it still is a, a key feature for us that, you know, even if I've done instructor-led training a year ago on a particular topic, if I don't use all of that functionality that I covered in a, in a class a year ago, there's going to be some gaps, you know, some things that I'm not going to retain from that instructor-led training. Again, this gives you that tool that you can come in and find that kind of nugget of information that you need on how to do this particular type of feature or operation and then keep going with that. So, so those are some of the types of objectives that we're trying to address with a platform like Productivity Now. And what I want to do now is I want to invite Todd to show us some of these features. We'll take a look at some of the content in the system and, and talk about some of the various features that enable you to manage some of your own content, even manage people in the system. So Todd, I'm going to throw it over to you if you want to take the reins here. You bet. Thank you. Productivity Now is a very simple but accessible online tool 24-7. You can customize it for your own logo and colors and fonts and rearrange, do anything you want. That's what's you know great about the marketing side to make it feel like your own platform. But the real power behind Productivity Now is the searchability. You're able to search very quickly what you want when you need it and be able to learn you know via videos or um, documents or anything you want. Just by searching, finding that content, being able to narrow it down by what publisher, a document, a learning path, a video, a workflow, the product you're talking about. You know, you may be in Creo 6.0. We offer multiple versions and products. But again, then you're going into videos or short videos, and they're able to really talk about you know just that particular feature or function or you can go into the actual learning path and see in this course chapter or maybe someone's asking you want to share it to someone else or drop it into a shared folder that's all about collaborating being able to share it to my own assets take it offline a couple of weeks and be on an airplane so the ability to share be able to find what you need when you need it is very powerful. There's a lot of creating trajectory or, you know, like I said, videos. Um, these are all set up so that you can watch them and see this is a minute and a half, very quick. And again, you have sharing, you can, you know, drop it into a shared folder, email it, copy the link, put it in chat very easily. The next thing that's very nice about this is the ability to go down and see you have the Katia, you have the Katia V5, the V6, the Creo Parametric and Simulate. So all of these are very helpful when talking about, you know, being able to really self-enroll or assign this training. Todd, thanks. So maybe just click on the Katia V5-6 library here. So I just wanted to give you a quick 
look at the, the breadth of courses and learning paths that we offer here. So for example, for TV 5, 6, you'll see we cover all of the core areas, starting with introduction to modeling. Uh, we have intro courses for NC and FEA users, intro courses for experienced users. And then we go into some of the, the higher level topics where we'll cover uh, advanced part modeling, assembly modeling, surfacing, the, uh, the drafting workbenches and so on, even into some of the DMU workbenches as well. Todd, if we switch over to Creo Parametric, and you'll see uh, across the top, we have multiple versions as we did for Katia. So the latest being Creo 7, we go all the way back to three. We click on Creo 6 and uh, we just expand the learning paths uh, list here. Again, you'll see uh, similarly, we break up the, our Creo learning paths into smaller chunks, but again, we'll cover all of the same core areas, starting with introductory right on up through sheet metal, drawing surface, uh, and then some specialized areas like cable design, behavioral modeling, uh, MBD, or model-based definition is a, is a popular one for us lately as well. Uh, Todd, let's just go back to Creo 7, if you would. And then I'm going to have you uh, just open up some of the categories of content. So as you can see, when, when this comes up here, in addition to learning paths, we give you the ability to, to browse through a, a document library. So if you want to do a, a quick look for a topic, so Todd searched on ribs earlier, for example. So just uh, as he does that, you can see that'll narrow down the, or filter the list to, to a specific document that addresses the, the topic that I was looking for. Similarly, if we go into the, the video library, again, what we've done is had our instructors, so those instructors that have that you know, 10 to 20 years experience teaching Katia and Creo, we've had them record uh, all of the presentations that they deliver in their classes and all the demonstrations. So if we were doing something with Boolean, which is a, a, uh, an interesting topic for Creo 7 with the new multi-body design functionality, uh, there's some videos uh, for that topic again that he's filtered down so let's just clear the search there and we'll go into the into the learning paths and uh, and just go in and enroll Todd if you want to just grab any of the intro level uh, learning paths and we'll take a, a look at what the content or how it's presented in here so when you go into any of our learning paths you'll see you know an overview at the top of what's covered Todd's gonna go ahead and enroll in the the topics down below and it does give you the option if you just want to enroll in an individual module like for example, managing your Creo session and, and files, for example, you could enroll in just that one, or he selected the enroll in all button up at the top so that he enrolls in the entire learning path. And as he expands it here, you can see the list of topics that we cover, and he'll go to the course now and go into the learning environment. And what you'll see, this is a pretty standard layout. You'll see the course map over on the left-hand side. And as he scrolls through the, the content here, you'll see a mixture of content, uh, instructional content, you know, with text and images that explain all of the different um, uh, features and modules. Then you'll see videos that, again, are recorded by our instructors. And the videos, you'll see all of the names of the videos are appended at the beginning with either explain or, or show. And the difference there is with the explained videos, what we do is have the instructors basically the same lecture that they would give there in a planning class where they'll explain the features. So they'll go through in depth talking about the different options that are available. And then with the uh, the show videos, that's where they go into the software and uh, we'll try out and demonstrate a, uh, a feature or process to you. Uh, as Todd is clicking on different options here, you'll see green check marks appear next to the name. So the system is always keeping track of where you are in the system. We'll talk about reporting in just a little bit. With the with the content in the courses, again, with the video content, what we're trying to do is, is cater to different learning styles. So we, we tell you in the instructional or text-based content, we show you in the... Um, uh, in the videos and then there you'll see these practice exercises uh, at the end of most of the modules where we give you now a chance to try it for yourself so we'll provide a link where you can download uh, either the KT or the Creo or if you're using Inventor or AutoCAD these are all libraries you could uh, have access to in here uh, you can download the, the practice files and work through the tasks and the steps for each of these uh, a little further down in the in the chapter there you'll see a review questions so we provide you with a series of review questions that just verify that you got the key topics that we tried to pre present in that module so those are all multiple choice style 
uh, quizzes that uh, that you can work through and 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 just make sure again that you caught those key concepts. If you didn't, then you can go back and review this content as many times as you as you choose to. So uh, the content is set up so that it remembers where you left off. If I log out today and come back in tomorrow and, and enter into the course, first off, you'll see on the home page that uh, all of the courses that you're enrolled in will be listed in the My Courses section. And uh, if you click on any of those uh, tiles that are there for those that you're enrolled in, it'll automatically take you back to, to where you left off. Okay, so Todd, I'll throw it back to you there. Excellent, thank you. So like Paul was talking about, we also have the addition of, you know, Autodesk. There is a lot of information on, you know, cross-platform training here where you can add this in and actually have access to, if you're using AutoCAD as your uh, 2D, you know, design tool, you could actually get information, you know, on that training for those, you know, using the software. So it is actually, you know, a cross-platform uh, learning management system and curriculum. And it's in the same format where you have the different uh, basic and drawing and 101, I call it university style learning, 101, 102, uh, getting into your 201, 202, 203, and then on through 301, you know, more advanced or specialty. So it's the same format throughout all of our curriculum and it looks the same. So when you're talking about, you know, having consistency throughout your organization, it's very important that you have that and you have the ability to customize all of this as well. Maybe you don't do certain things um, or maybe you want to add your own content and put it right in the middle of the courses so that you're learning not only AutoCAD or Creo or CATIA, you're learning your specific processes and procedures or how you do certain things, maybe a short video. But again, these all look the same. And one thing I'll notice, you will notice, is that even if you get interrupted, which all of us do, the system remembers where you're at. I've done these different you know, parts of the curriculum here in this uh, chapter, but it knows I have not looked at the ribbon. So I can go now and you know, start where I left off. Very helpful. It is all based on a learning management system. So it is searchable, indexed, it has memory of everything you've done. What does that mean also is you have reporting. So once you self-enroll or you assign learning to your individuals, you can then go in and report on what they're doing, how they're doing, where they're at in their learning journey. Everything in here is reported and you can drill down and print PDFs or Excel sheets and export the data on completed or where they're at, how much time, what progress, what they're you know needing to get done. Not only that, but our system also tracks what they've done in the portal. What have they searched? What are they looking at? Did they get in and do anything? That's important. But again, searches, resources they've looked at, what content did they look at? You can use this for maybe some directive training on or you know specific training on topics or features, maybe a live one or maybe um, assigning yet another chapter or course for the individuals or group of people. So the reporting is very powerful. While I'm in this management utility, one thing to know is that the administration of the users is very simple. We have the ability to synchronize with your Active Directory users and groups and single sign-on. We have that ability. You don't have to put them in one by one. Can you? Yes, but you don't have to. Another thing that is in here is managing the content. I think you've heard Paul and myself talk about how you can manage this yourself as far as what you want in the system. You can even say what you want to see or not. But it's very important that you talk about not only training, but training your way. 
bringing in your own documents or, you know, documents, uh, Excel, PDF, Word, your own video content. Make some short videos on how to do certain things in the system or in your processes. And then you can create quizzes based on that information to drop right into the existing learning. So if you're talking about, you know, sketch or enhancement or maybe any of these parts, user interface and enhancements, you actually can go in and put in your own video, your own document, your own quiz at the end of it that really helps the user learn more, not only the product, but how you use it. Another thing that's very nice that I kind of jumped over is when you find those searches and the you know content that people are struggling with, you can actually create a live event like a lunch and learn, and then say one of the prerequisites is going into you know chapter whatever of whatever curriculum, and you must have passed that first to be able to attend my live session. And then additional info you want to put in or registration, maybe it's, you know, in a training room and we have cheese pizza or pepperoni. You can track who attended. You can, you know, even do a survey of your own at the end of it. Set up a couple sessions. It will actually, you know, you can assign it then to anyone who is um, going to be in you know, that session or you want to attend. So they can self-register or you can assign. You know, it's kind of out there of, you know, do you want to come or you are coming to my training? Um, so we have that ability both ways. Another thing that's very nice about this system is we have the ability to um, come back to the home screen, gather information in many different ways, like a company, ABC, we work on their stuff all the time or we do products for them. My department, you know, what is it that I want to tell my people or show them or require them to look at? It's a, kind of like a network folder. You know, you think of it the same way or a project or even all your standards. We even have the ability to push that information out to subcontractors. Maybe you want them to go through a workflow or, a, you know, certain training. You can actually invite external people and you know contractors and come in and be on the same page. So one of the things, I'm gonna jump over to Paul real quick on talking about workflows, the next thing. Great, thanks Todd. So Todd, do you still have the, uh, the samples I brought up for you? Yeah, so if we go into, let's go into the CCRECO workflow. So this is an example of uh, a workflow that we put together for uh, for an OVF, so for an engineering change request uh, workflow. So you can see the the way that the workflows are put together. Uh, they're both graphical and, and text-based. The graphical view that you have in the center obviously lines up similar to a uh, flow chart. That, uh, that panel is interactive. I can zoom in on the different uh, nodes that are uh, in that workflow. I can click on a node to, uh, to jump to that. Uh, to the steps or the tasks associated with that node. So it's a great way to, to put together a, a process, um, uh, you know, and again, something like Anovia or Windchill lends itself to that type of documentation quite well because uh, these these workflows or processes that you have for things like, you know, again, like an ECR process, uh, this is a great way to document those. I, I will say we have companies that use these in other ways as well. So in addition to you know, putting their, their CAD or their PLM related data in here, you know, I've seen examples where we have customers, HR departments, putting uh, in a workflow based around their onboarding Boarding process. So you're not, you're certainly not limited to what you can put into this system. It doesn't have to be related to your use of, you know, Kati or Creo or Anovi or any of these products. Um, once you, once we provide you with access to the platform, you know, the, there's no limit on what you can use this for, where you see uh, possibilities to, uh, to deliver different types of content to your, to your users. Yep. So again, it's not necessarily training. It's actually beyond the training. Now we're talking about how do you apply what you've learned? How does, you know, your company do certain things? You may take one of our standard workflows and you can modify it and actually put your own screenshots in, uh, put in your own links to different uh, 
directories on your server, whatever it may be you need to get that point across of what is the step-by-step -step process to set up a project or um, to do certain things inside of your company. And it doesn't have to be product related. It could be, you know, HR related like onboarding or, you know, certain uh, procedures in the company. Very powerful and very unique to productivity now. So going back, the other thing we wanted to talk about in here is really, you know, it's just the fact that you have the ability to um, learn what you need when you need it or ongoing professional development of your team. And that's truly very important today when you're talking about our um, world and how things have changed in the younger generation. They truly do understand that, you know, you learn constantly. You're always needing to go in and uh, tweak your knowledge and understand or, you know, learn something new to help uh, improve efficiencies. And so going in and uh, being able to do that 24-7, that's what productivity now is all about. Paul, I'm going to okay. turn it back over to you. Todd, before you go away there, I'm going to have you talk a little mm -hmm. bit about how we help customers get uh, rolling with productivity now. That's right. That's our customer success program. That is where you will have an advisor that is assigned to your account. You have this person that will help you implement, set goals, and generate awareness with your users through communication, you know, whether emails or live meetings. But we're not going to leave you out there and just say, here it is, go for it. We need to change culture. We need to change behaviors so that people are, you know, creating a tab of productivity now in their browser so that when they run into a problem, they can search or find what they want or they have 30 minutes or, you know, an hour a week maybe that you have on their time, they have on their time card for professional development. They go in and just learn a new skill or a new feature. So that generating awareness is really very key in changing culture and behavior. How do we, you know, check that? We review and adapt our plan all the way through the term of your contract, and that drives the value. And what we hope is, you know, year over year, you continue to develop the system in your customized learning paths and customized workflows so that when people come in, they go right to productivity now, they don't have to interrupt other people with that tribal knowledge and, you know, be able to empower your staff. This is a proven success, by the way, that we measure as, you know, with this customer success and implementation, we have over a 90% success rate. People are much happier. You know, you see the return on investment and that's what our goal is. All right. Thanks, Todd. That's great. And again, the key point here that we wanted to, to get across talking about the customer success is that we just don't turn it over to you and, and walk away. You know, we'll, we'll help you with the implementation uh, with, uh, with some folks on Todd's team to get you to get you up and rolling. We'll check in with you periodically to, to see how we can get information out to your users and, and so on. So it's, uh, it's definitely a value add that we provide with the, uh, with the Productivity Now platform for, for implementation and ongoing success with that. Uh, I just flashed a couple of testimonials up on the, the screen here. Some of these are, are long-term users of uh, Productivity Now. Some are fairly new, uh, but the, the key uh, common theme, I guess, through them is that it, uh, it just adds uh, a resource for their, for their users of the various CAD tools and PLM tools that they're, that they're using. Again, whether it's new users or for that update training, I'll mention the Creo 7 update training once again, uh, having that resource that they can go back to uh, when they need it, you know, just in time is, is a valuable thing for them. 
Um, Todd has mentioned uh, the uh, the other tools that we have available um, or other libraries of content I guess we'd have available in the system that uh, even if you're using this for Kiti or Creo, you can see some optional content that we provide as, uh, as additional add-on libraries. So again, if you're using Autodesk tools in addition to either Kiti or Creo, we, we offer a full library on that. And then some, some other specialized areas, other software tools like SketchUp, uh, Adobe tools, Microsoft, uh, even health and safety and business management skills. So quite a, a range for not just your CAD users, but um, for, for other users throughout your organization. Todd, you want to just talk about this last one? Yeah, we actually have a calculator. We let our customers put in the numbers, and every time we do that, we find that um, kind of like uh, on the last screen with the testimonial, you know, it's a very fast return on investment because the cost of the ongoing uh, productivity now for you know the year or three years or whatever you're talking about, the return is very fast in users gaining productivity over having to search or find answers or interrupt other people. It doesn't take much at all to really realize that return. And that's really all this is saying is that, you know, the investment is very small and it's a very fast return.